Assalamu alaikum today we are going to study about the periodontal ligament so the first question which arises is that what is periodontal ligament so if i draw a teeth here okay if this is our teeth i would say that periodontal ligament is something which surrounds the tooth or say it surrounds the root so this is our periodontal ligament in green and it connects the tooth with the alveolar bone so this is my alveolar bone so the periodontal ligament will fill up the space between the bone alveolar bone and the tooth all right so this periodontal ligament is actually a connective tissue so this is a connective tissue and a very highly cellular connective tissue so it is a connective tissue okay and it has vascular supply as well so it has complex complex vasculature as well vasculature so it has blood vessels also here and there okay and the most important element of the periodontal ligament is the principal fibers so we have some some principal 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 fibers so the fibers will just go here and there okay and we'll study about these fibers today so this was an idea about the periodontal ligament So this is a radiograph of mandibular premolar region and we are going to see what structures are present here. So basically we are going to study about the surrounding structures and anatomy in general, okay? So I'll just start off with the bone. So we have two types of bone, okay? So you can find this white line going throughout. This is the lamina dura. This is the lamina dura. okay so it is the part of the alveolar bone which covers the alveolus you can see this is covering it is covering the alveolus so it is the lamina dura and then we have some meshwork of bone here you can see the meshwork so this is the spongy bone this is the spongy spongy bone okay and between this lamina dura and the root you can find the space here this black line going throughout this is the area where our periodontal ligament is present so our pdl is present here pdl all right and this is the portion where our cemento enamel junction is there so the alveolar bone it is somewhat 1 mm 1 mm apical to the cej all right in normal situations if i have to make the periodontal ligament space outside i would make it something like this So this is an hourglass shape. So the hourglass. This is a horrible attempt at hourglass. So this is actually the hourglass is broadest at the periphery and in the center it is narrow. So this is the hourglass. So it is narrowest at the mid root level. So the at the mid root level it is narrowest, and the width of the periodontal ligament is approximately. Point um point two five mm, so the range is around point two to point four mm. So what this space does whenever the tooth is subjected to any kind of force, so the force is coming from here and everywhere. So if the force is coming from any direction, this space will allow the forces to get distributed. All right. and the periodontal ligament is also essential for the mobility of the teeth okay so tooth mobility is to a large extent determined by width height quality of the periodontal ligament so we studied that the pdl the pdl it is essential for mobility mobility of the teeth the normal mobility or when this gets affected or affected by pathology this gets abnormal mobility so it is essential for the mobility okay and this periodontal ligament space it distributes the force now let's study about the principal fibers so we are going to study about the principal fibers so i'll just come back to this diagram and tell you one more thing that the fibers are going from the root to the bone so i'll take a different color so it is going from root to the bone so the ends of these fibers for example this end and this end these are called as sharpies sharpies fibers 
so these are called the sharpies fibers so the terminal portion of the principal fibers that are inserted into the cementum and the bone are termed sharpies fibers and these ends that tend to calcify and they are associated with some protein some non collagenous protein which are osteo osteopontin osteopontin and bone bone sialoprotein protein okay so we'll hear the term collagen here and there so what is actually a collagen collagen is a protein collagen is a protein so it is a collagen collagen is a protein which is composed of different amino acids and the most important of them are glycine proline so i'll just write it here glycine glycine proline okay etc etc so this is what collagen is and one more thing the principal fibers are composed mainly of collagen type 1 collagen type 1 so our principal fibers have collagen type 1 now let's study about the principal fibers principal fibers okay so i will draw two diagrams so one diagram would be as if you're looking the tooth from front so this is how you look from front and one diagram would be as if you're looking the teeth from the side okay so this would be our for example this is the gingiva here okay and this is the bone let me draw a bone properly okay so these are the two diagrams let us see this diagram first so there are few fibers which are present above this bone so there are few fibers which are present above this bone and they are embedded into the cementum and they have no bony attachment so these are called as the as the trans trans septal fibers and people say that this has gingival origin because it has no osseous attachment okay so this was our trans septal fiber the next fiber is the alveolar alveolar crest fiber crest fiber okay so to study about this let me tell you little about the epithelium here so this gingiva it has three kinds of epithelium one epithelium so this area right here which is towards the oral tissue this is called as the this is the oral epithelium epithelium okay and this area right here which is attached to the tooth this is the this is the i'll just use a black color this is the junctional epithelium junctional because this is a junction between the gingiva and the root so this is the junctional epithelium okay and this area right here this area this is kind of you know this is the sulcus where you put the probe and you check the depth so this is the sulcular epithelium this is the sulcular epithelium epithelium so we have the oral epithelium here then we have the junctional epithelium and we have the circular epithelium so the alveolar crest fibers they extend obliquely from the cementum just beneath the junctional epithelium so this is the junctional epithelium so they will just extend beneath the junctional epithelium and they will insert to this bone this is the alveolar crest fiber so the function of alveolar crest fiber is that it prevents the extrusion of the tooth so it will not allow the tooth to get extruded or to come out of the socket okay and it also resist lateral tooth movement so it has two functions it prevents extrusion prevents extrusion and it resists lateral movement okay next we have horizontal group of fibers so i'll just use this diagram because this is very dirty now so the horizontal group fibers so let me draw these thing here also so this is um, the transseptal fiber okay and then we have um let me let me use a black color so this is the alveolar crest fiber then we have the horizontal group fiber so these are horizontal so i'm making them horizontally 
so they extend at right angles to the long axis of truth this is the long axis and they are at right angle so they'll make 90 degree angle all right and then we have the oblique fibers so the oblique fibers are like this so they are the largest group of fiber so this is the oblique fiber and they are the largest largest group of periodontal ligament they are oblique but but the question is if they are this way or if they are this way oblique so oblique can be two ways right so our oblique fiber it extends in a coronal direction from the cementum so when it inserts it goes coronally means towards the crown all right and they bear the brunt of the vertical masticatory stresses so whatever the vertical stresses are there they will they will handle the vertical vertical masticatory stresses masticatory stresses so what they do they transform them into tension on the alveolar bone next we have the apical group fibers so these are placed apically yeah note that they radiate in irregular fashion so they are kind of irregular fashion okay from the cementum to the bone at the apical region of the socket and obviously in the incompleted root they are not present and the last one we have is the interradicular group so for the interradicular group i need to make a different diagram because the interradicular group is present in the furcation areas so this is our multi rooted teeth so the interradicular is present in the furcation areas okay so this is the interradicular group so in total we have six principal fibers these are the transeptal transeptal then we have the alveolar alveolar crest then we have the horizontal horizontal and then we have the oblique apical apical and then we have the interradicular interradicular group okay so i hope this was helpful please don't forget to comment and give a thumbs up and you can join me on facebook to stay updated thanks for watching allah hafiz bye